Better Call Saul is a show that as a prequel had a predetermined outcome. Part of its tragedy was that we already knew the end. So why do I hate the fact that we finally arrived? I guess I didn't expect to be this sad. I don't know about you, but Saul was someone I've been wanting to see the whole series. I wanted that classic Breaking Bad Saul and his way with words. We've seen glimpses throughout the series, but now we're finally here and I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. We always knew it would end this way, but somehow I'm surprised when it finally arrived. I think that's what's been so amazing about this show, is that it somehow surprises you despite you knowing the outcome. It's very unique as a prequel in that way. For example, I was scared for Jimmy in Bagman. I was worried he would never be a lawyer again in Vida Sane. I was concerned over and over despite knowing how it ends. It was a similar moment with Jimmy's quite literal transformation into Saul at the end of 609, Fun and Games. This time though, when we stepped into that moment of him going full Saul, it didn't feel right. It felt awful. There was no more space to worry, because there's nowhere else to go. That's kind of the theme of this episode for me, is this arrival at the final stop as it were. This blunt stop, where we're following a story, and then have our heads thrown back, whiplash by the sudden arrival at our destination. We've been aiming for this point for six seasons, and when we arrived, I got this horrible feeling inside of me. One truly amazing thing about this show is that they've taken some of the most shallow characters of Breaking Bad and really added more dimensions to them. Saul typically acting as comic relief and haha funny lawyer man, turning him into possibly the most tragic character of the universe. Same goes for Gus and Mike, two fairly one note characters in Breaking Bad who acted as these stern, scary faces. So today I want to analyze my hatred for this episode, really. It was a dark, but incredibly illuminating one for all of our main characters. Let's start with Jimmy and Kim, and then we can talk about Mike and Gus. This episode was really important, aside the obvious reason of Jimmy and Kim split, but because it feels like it was the last episode of Better Call Saul. It seems like 610 onwards is a different show now. No Kim, no Howard, no Chuck, and no Jimmy. There was a horrible hollowness about this episode, where we got a final tour of the life of Jimmy before it all fell apart. We end the lawyer side of things with Howard's funeral, which takes place in HHM. HHM representing the potential moral life Kim and Jimmy could have led, which they instead destroyed, quite literally. They had a huge part in the deaths of both Chuck and Howard. I found this whole ending scene quite powerful. As it was happening, I had this thought in the back of my head, that this was probably the final time the legal world would see Jimmy and Kim, in the way they had been seen throughout the series. As Rich states, it's the end of an era. In the same way that HHM becomes Bruckner Partners, Jimmy has now fully become Saul, with Rich even mentioning it at the end. Everything is moving on and changing. All the hurt that's been caused is being covered up, painted over, removed like it never happened. That bin is significant in that way, I think, as strange as that sounds. All that rage that Jimmy let out on that bin in season one, and now it's like it never happened. That sums up the whole purpose of Saul. This persona and mask Jimmy can wear to keep on keeping on, and to not have to face that pain or damage. Even as they leave the HHM offices, he says, let the healing begin. It's over. Oh, you're really over. Let the healing begin. Jimmy's always ready to move on and start again. His full committal to Saul only coming when Kim finally leaves him. This whole world we've witnessed for six seasons is over. I also really liked the interaction with Cheryl. I loved Kim's insistence that you were his wife. You saw him every day. You knew him better than anyone. Maybe I misunderstood what I saw. You would have known. I think it's somewhat of a revelatory moment for Kim herself in regard to Jimmy. Of course she's lying about Howard's drug problem in the moment, but her words seem to double up pretty well for Kim's own assessment of her relationship with Jimmy. The subsequent scene having her share a final kiss with Jimmy before quitting the law and leaving him. This whole time she knew full well what she was getting into here. Kim's own way of plastering over things was always to dig deeper, to believe Jimmy and continue on with him. As they continue to scam throughout, she goes from questioning whether she wants to be with him to marrying him. I think this is finally the moment she realizes the 
there's nowhere else to go. Howard's last words to her clearly struck a nerve, and she's realizing that despite her constant saving and recurring belief in Jimmy, ultimately she can't save him, and her persistence to try is only enabling them both, and causing irreparable harm to those around them. I think Jimmy is able to move on, become someone new in Seoul, but Kim requires to physically leave, to run, much like we can presume she did back when she lived in Nebraska. That's what she's done since she was a child, and I think the inevitable ending for her, therefore, was for her to do the same here. Jimmy copes by covering up, typically through Seoul, and Kim copes by running, or moving on, starting completely anew, wiping her life clean and starting elsewhere. She can no longer kid herself with the sunk cost fallacy, I don't think. It's a tough one to judge. Let me know what you think. In the end, we knew this relationship would end this way in large part because of where Saul is in Breaking Bad. There's something that feels so strikingly unreal about it happening though, and I think it's kind of summed up well by Kim. We didn't want it to end, we were having too much fun. Kim's true ending at this point is still uncertain, but it certainly brings a new perspective to Breaking Bad. Saul is a broken man, who needs the constant chatter of work in his ear, to make sure he never gets a chance to think about what he's lost. Saul has eclipsed him, and in many ways he's become the very thing he hated about Chuck, a person who cared more for his work and the law than those around him. Jimmy refers back to Chuck's quote in the episode Chicanery as we leave him alone in his office, finally arriving at this inevitable destination. On the flip side, the cartel side of things had almost an upbeat nature to it, with Gus getting away with all he's done, Hector being mocked by Eladio, and things seeming just alright after the relentlessness of the whole Lalo Nacho situation. Gus lets his guard down briefly, and for the first time, we see him as a human. Ultimately though, this episode shows us the final moments of each character's humanity in a sense. Gus leaves a potential relationship, for the purpose of revenge. Mike tries to find humanity in the situation he's found himself in, but Manuel basically says, uh-uh fella, you're too far gone, and you're just as bad as everyone you claim to hate. Which, by the way, I loved. <laughs> There's this weird misconception with a large part of the viewer base of this universe that think Mike is a good guy, when really he's just as bad as everyone around him. Manuel was told that his son had been murdered, and he seemed pretty much immediately accepting of it, because we saw in 603 in their final conversation, he knew this would happen if Nacho continued down the path he did. He loves him, but I don't think he's surprised. He's mourned his son far before he died. In 603, Manuel also mentions how many times they've had this conversation. It felt a bit like that with Mike here. There's this show of remorse, or attempt to make it right on Mike's part, and I like how Manuel basically just tells him how it is. It's a far more quiet and subtle version of Chuck's embrace it moment to Jimmy. But what's the point of all the sad faces and the gnashing of teeth? If you're not going to change your behavior, and you won't, I can why not just skip the whole exercise? In the end, you're going to hurt everyone around you. You can't help it. So stop apologizing and accept it. Embrace it. Stop with the sad faces and empty words and just embrace who you are. Mike loves to give a sad, disapproving look when he hears about unintended collateral in the deaths of innocence. It doesn't stop him though. Sure, he gives a sad face when hearing about the Good Samaritan, or when staring down at Howard in a grave with Lalo Salamanca. He seems to believe there is justice in the fact that he got revenge for those innocents. But as Manuel points out, that's not really the point. And is more something he's doing to justify his own horrific actions. I think that's part of the tragedy of Nacho, but Mike as well is that these two characters from the get-go are too far gone. So to have this blunt dressing down by Manuel, who represents the show's lawfulness and morality, I think was quite powerful. I think a bit like Casper's words to Mike in 501 about Werner, these words hit in a similar way. In that moment, Mike is grouped in with the rest of the criminal world. He was worth 50 of you. Where here with Manuel, it's simpler in that he essentially states, you're worth nothing, you're all the same. He's heard Nacho constantly fail to take his advice and go down his own path, fighting back, attempting to beat the Salamancas, when all Manuel wanted was for his son to walk away, which from our perspective as the viewer may seem a little bit naive. But at one point or another, 
there was a time where Nacho could have walked away. Probably not in the course of the show, but before that, where we can presume Nacho was being told the exact same thing by Manuel. It's interesting too because Nacho and Manuel feel to me to be the inverse of Mike and Matty. Mike was the crooked cop, Matty was the good cop, Nacho was a criminal, his father was a hard-working honest man. I think ultimately these words from Manuel are kind of meant to reflect that initial sentiment of Matty and how Mike broke him. Mike is still the same guy he was in season 1, he's just more accepting of it now. The bluntness of this moment I think is almost meant to be a message to Mike saying Matty wouldn't have wanted him to get revenge in the way he did. Like Manuel says, that was all him. That's all people like him think about. A bit like Saul therefore, Mike was pretty much always destined to be that guy. So these blunt words by Manuel are a bit like the blunt jump cut from Jimmy to Saul. Despite everything that Mike has done, for a multitude of different reasons, he still clings on to this sense of justice. I think the whole point of that cage shot too was that it was meant to represent that Mike is trapped on that path, much like Nacho who was in too deep and ended up dead. The same is going to happen to Mike. The justice he claims to be providing ultimately catches up to him when he bleeds out alone failing to get any money to his family. Most of the characters in this universe have a fatal flaw that eventually catches up to them. Waltz was his ego, Gus his desire for revenge, and I think for Mike it was this distorted sense of justice that has been forever festering in him since his days as a corrupt cop. Gus's ending is quite succinct. We get this short scene where he talks to a man about wine, and there's clear possibility for a relationship of some form that Gus notably decides not to pursue. Despite the many successes for Gus recently, the killing of Lalo and Nacho, gaining northern territory, and taking one step closer to destroying the Salamancas, he's still unsatisfied. The whole scene at Eladio's I found really interesting, because this scene holds probably the most despicable characters of the universe. When we hear that Hector has dictated this whole letter for Eladio, only for it to be mocked and for him to be wheeled away, with his own family even disagreeing with his claims, I felt kind of bad. At least as bad as I could feel given the horrific human being that Hector is. I think the point of this though was kind of meant to show that Gus has the upper hand in every sense at this point. In this episode, he won. He beat the Salamancas. But what the bar scene shows us is that despite this, he isn't done yet. His need for revenge is too strong. He can't accept this huge win despite the many hardships he was put through to achieve it. Because ultimately, winning to him is the complete decimation of the Salamanca family. Personally, this puts a whole new spin on Breaking Bad, in that Gus was basically always going to win. He'd already overcome probably his biggest obstacle with Lalo. He was in a comfortable position, with control of the North, Eladio's respect, despite Eladio seeing the hatred in his eyes. Yet he still decides it's not enough. Because of the one time this group of people truly hurt him, he dedicates his life to repeatedly causing that in return. This episode, this moment in the bar, is truly a hand reaching out. We see the closest thing to humanity in Gustavo Fring in this moment, and he decides to walk away. So inevitability is a big thing here. Finally arriving at the destination, the inevitable has arrived. And we can even include characters that weren't in Breaking Bad for that, because to some extent, we already knew their ending. They weren't in Breaking Bad, so clearly something happened to them. We knew Kim would leave in some form, or something would happen to her. We knew Nacho and Lalo couldn't live, or in a similar way they'd be on the run. We knew Chuck was probably dead, and we knew Howard had, at the very least again, cut ties with Jimmy. So really the series was this huge inevitable outcome that we've seen slowly unfold over six seasons. So yeah, basically this episode was really depressing. 